is an amazing person and Janet is equally amazing. And I'm so happy that we are all going to hang out for the next hour or so and, and get to revel in, in their talk and their perspective on an amazing topic on love and, and, har and harmony. Um, so I will read this um, by way of introduction. Oliver is a leadership consultant who coaches successful entrepreneurs who feel spiritually bankrupt to build a purpose-driven lifestyle business. Janet is a psychic medium, healer, mentor, and artist who helps people evaluate the connection to their soul, sacred contracts, and loved ones in spirit so they experience more joy and freedom in their life and creative expression. That's an amazing bio. These, uh, you know, I was thinking I've known them for a couple of years, but you know, I was thinking in terms of the number of hours I've actually been able to hang out with, with Oliver and Janet, it's not that many, but I, I, I feel like I have a very deep connection. Like I feel like I've been friends with both of them for so long. And I really attribute that a lot to them in terms of who they are as people. And, you know, sometimes you meet someone and it's, it's, it's just, it's more at a superficial level, but when you meet Oliver and Janet, you go deep and you go deep quick with these guys. <laughs> and it's, it's a really, it's a beautiful thing. And, um, and so I'm really happy that we invited them and Farouz, you know, you had the wisdom to bring in such an amazing couple and they're at a very exciting part in their journey. And maybe they'll tell us a bit about that. Um, and the one other thing I would say is just that, you know, they just have so much wisdom and depth and they live with intention and they live with purpose and they live with joy. And when you hang out with them, you just feel radiance and joy. And so, you know, I can think of no two better people to be talking to us tonight about this topic than, than Oliver and Janet. So really looking forward to hearing your talk. Please, over to you guys. Wow, amazing. Thank you for that, Brett. <laughs> what an incredible introduction. Are we blushing? You won't be able to tell because Oliver's more tan, just me. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah, we're, we're so honored to, can you see us or, or this, is it the screen? You can see the screen? Okay. Yeah, we're so honored that we get to uh, contribute to the community and be a part of this community. Thank you so much to Farooz for inviting us to, to be a part and to, to, to gift us with your trust uh, with, with uh, this incredible topic. It's a very deep topic and uh, we're excited to do it together. Yeah, it's our first talk together, I guess, like creating a talk together for sure. Um, and for this community, it's such an honor because we, I don't even know how often, but we bring up this community a lot um, because we have a deep, respect and admiration for for everyone that we've met uh, within the Baha'i sort of circle here and um, all, all the wisdom that we've gained from all these talks and um, just getting to know you has been so valuable for our just everything inspiration quality of life um, things to look forward to so thank you so much so um, first you know this is such a it's such a beautiful topic to discuss and I, and you know Brett is is correct we're in a very interesting time in our journey you know we we had this great experience in Costa Rica we had a celebratory symbolic day celebrating our relationship um, our wedding was supposed to be in September of 2020 but then it was it, it was moved of course because of the regulations and uh, so we are at that at that part of our lives where we're starting a new chapter and so by all means we don't know it all <laughs> <laughs> not. we're not per we're not perfect we don't have all of the answers everything that we're going to be sharing with you are things that we do practice but uh, just like with everything else you know we fall out and we fall back in but it has created um, like a great structure for us like something to really to to as a rem as a reminder of these are foundational things that that are really beneficial for having a unifying and harmonious relationship so let's just get started. Yeah. Okay. So beautiful, building unifying and harmonious relationships. So this is our intention. We want to share our intention with you. You want to 
Yeah, sure. So our intention is to, of course, inspire and help you see what is possible. Um, sharing simple, I like to, we like to try to keep things simple so they seem attainable, but also very significant. So I love, um, yeah, having ways that you can integrate into your life um, that get you excited to create deeper bonds with those you love. Um, to help you know what you want as individuals and also as a couple, if you are in a partnership, um, and to leave you excited to try something new uh, and see how just a little extra effort can lead to a lot more expansive love. So in preparing this talk for you, um, and, and, and it's really cool because this is some, something that we've been kind of dreaming about doing at some point and Farooz's invitation uh, really had us be like, okay, maybe this is the universe's, maybe this is God's <laughs> sign for us to kind of get this down on paper and see you know, what insights we can share. And you'll see the theme throughout this whole thing, the thread that really ties it all together is clear communication. Uh, we have all these great insights and exercises that we invite you to consider. Uh, but what you'll find is the, the theme of communication runs through it all. And it's almost like without uh, clear communication, there would be no possibility for an expansive sense of love for that unifying harmonious type of love. So let's just d dive in into what I mean, what we mean by communication. Um, so I put down clear communication equals a unified and harmonious relationship. And it's the essence to a unifying and harmonious relationship. And so this is not just talking to each other. I think we get the idea, like the thing that comes to my head is, you know, a couple, they're in an argument and one partner is ready to just hash it out. Okay, let's, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. Let's solve the problem right now. Let's fix this right now. And sometimes the other partner is just like, no, I need, I need to breathe. I need... I need some room, I need some space, I need to sit with this. And that's not what we mean by communication. It's communication is about intentionality. So it's like being really purposeful with what you're trying to accomplish. And also it's context specific. So really what that means is as individuals we're on our own journey, as a couple we're in our own journey, as a family we're in our own journey, you know, financially, professionally, relations, socially, like there's so many layers to us and just treating everything exactly the same like all across the board um, doesn't necessarily kind of, kind of honor the nuance of our own unique process. And so you'll see that this is really about learning the different contexts that we can find ourselves in. And so making clear requests and allowing each other to be and knowing what each other want and, and clarifying what's missing is part of clear communication. And so we'll start off with the first, the first fundamental here, the first pillar. <laughs> so one of the first pillars for us is definitely creating rituals that we love. Um, that help elevate us to feel better or within ourselves, which in turn, we are just feel great being together as well. Um, so one of mine, that's <laughs> why so I have a picture of the bath. One of mine is definitely getting in the bath. I find not only is it just relaxing physically on the body, you know, with hot water and all of that, but it's also a place where I find I'm the most tuned in to myself, uh, whether that's, you know, I feel like I hear deeper truths that I need to be, uh, you know, come into or become aware of. Um, often a lot of creative ideas, it's almost like that creative flow seems to happen there. So it's, it's kind of like my little sanctuary. And I know if I'm feeling thrown off or life is overwhelming, it's just a place that I can just ground myself. Uh, and I know I'll come out just operating from a different space. A far, a far more uh, loving space when things are really stressful. Um, so I light my candles. I have my own little ritual of that ritual, right? I, I have candles. I have pretty holders that create beautiful reflections. Uh, I love essential oils, so I use that. Um, so any way to really make myself feel like I value, um, I value my energy and I value my time and I like to carve it out or specific things I know will um, really change the trajectory of my whole day. 
um, yeah, so that's just one, one that really is a, a force multiplier for me. <laughs> yeah. I take bats too. <laughs> and I love them. So um, with, with rituals, what we're talking about really is these, you know, things that you can do on your own, like as individuals, but also have rituals together in your relationship. And what we find is having these rituals on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, it really helps ground us. It keeps us feeling like we're supported, like we're supporting ourselves. And what it does is, especially the ones when we have rituals together, it's, it promotes connection. It gives us time to communicate. And I put down here co-creation because if, when, we're, when we're having these times together where we're, we're we're having these discussions and going through these processes that we're going to, we're sharing with you. Uh, we're co-creating, you know, what our future is, what our present is. And when you make it a ritual, that means it's like, it's in the calendar, it's in the schedule. It's just part of the rhythm of your life. This is not a chore. It's actually, it's your lifestyle. This is how you, uh, this is the, the effort and the time and the energy that you are investing in each other and the lives that you are building together. Yeah, so creating a self-care ritual, um, of course, look different for everyone, um, but they almost always, why we choose them is because we feel grace, right? Whether it's uh, on the mental level, the emotional, spiritual, physical, and, and I feel like everyone in this group, you know, really uh, gets that that's really a one collaborative system, right? One impacts the other, and that's what brings us that wholeness. Um, so yeah, they all elevate personal well-being. Um, allowing us to be more present. Like I mentioned, just that one, me getting in the bath. This is another example of, of going for a walk, right? Like some things are so accessible. And I think, I think creating that simplicity around what self-care looks like or um, a ritual looks like. It could be five minutes in like the trail behind your house or going down by the water um, to just that five minutes could elevate your presence, your levels of compassion, um, just how resource, resourceful you can be uh, throughout your day and your, and your business and your relationship, of course. Um, and yeah, really show up for your loved ones that, that really matter to you. So it can be, I like to say like the smallest action that creates like the biggest impact um, in how we operate and, and how we show up. Yeah, and, and what's really cool is that when you, as, as individuals, know that you have self-care rituals for each other, you support each other in, in creating that. Like, I know there's times uh, where I'll remind Janet or just knowing, just feeling the energy, the aura in the room. It's like, maybe, like, do you want me to make a bath for you? Like, do you want me to put you, you know, do you want to, like, you want to, want to come out? Let's go for a drive. Let's go down to the water. So it's almost like we understand each other's, uh, sources of well-being and energy and so when we kind of de can detect it we support each other in making it possible okay let's go experience this tiny little walk in the park or whatever it is um, or maybe let's sit and meditate for us for a few minutes and so it's just kind of this thing that you you kind of do together um, I know and I know for, for myself personally that if I go like days or weeks without having some sort of self-care I feel like I'm just kind of chasing the day or I wake up and I'm already behind. But also if I wake, like when I wake up and I'm consistently, like for me, it's meditation, reading and journaling. It can be anywhere from one to three hours a day, depending on, on the day where I'm just doing self-care practices. And I just feel like I have a handle on, on the day. I just feel so much more present. I feel like I can, I actually do accomplish more. Um, and so it feels really great. So the exercise is to, to create a self-care ritual, it's super simple. It's like, what are the five practice practices for you that you can do in the morning for self-care and well-being? Just think of like, write down like the five things. And you know yourself, you know the things that you can do on a regular basis that, you know, you don't have to plan, you don't ahead. It's not this big event, this huge production. It's just like, boom, you just go. Like I know Sharon, you just pick up, you go for a run or bread, you grab your guitar and you strum, or I know Ken, you go for a bike ride and grab an espresso at the bakery. Like <laughs> you have like your rituals, you have your routines, right? So I, I, I feel like if you can have that individually and then, and you, you come as a couple or as a family, you're just bringing kind of like the best, 
the, your best self to the table. Yeah. Which leads us into this next piece. Yeah, so creating the relationship rituals. So here we are <laughs> in our nice little acro yoga um, <laughs> pose, one of the classes that we've taken. Um, and so that's something that we love to, to do both separately and together, uh, which is really lovely. Um, so yeah, it's really about creating experiences, growing together, learning together, um, whether that's something that you do daily or weekly, um, enjoying shared interests or discover new ones. Um, like I mean, Oliver, we're talking about, of course, planning this talk and we're lucky in that we do have a ton of overlapping interests um, because we were friends for like a decade before we were actually romantically together. So we already love to do a lot of similar things and value similar things. Um, but sometimes it takes a little bit more intentionality when you're with a partner who, you know, maybe they like golf and you like dance and, you know, maybe finding experiences that either can, can combine some things or showing up for each other just for the sake of, you know, that you care about each other and want to um, really be a stand for that person. Um, so yeah, intentional one-on-one -on -one time, um, really just enjoying each other. So some of ours, uh, like this picture, yoga, of course, we, uh, we teach yoga as well. Um, we're both into the arts. I'm into a lot of visual art, all of us into music. Um, we share mother nature as a huge um, value, hiking, traveling. So those are just some examples of ours. Um, and we love this statement where, you know, if it's, if it's important to me, it's, or if it's important to you, it's important to me. Um, and that's really what we really live by, even though we have overlapping um, things we like to do. I feel like we've always shown up that way for each other. Um, even when we were friends, you know, if, if one of us was working towards something or having an event, I just feel like we always showed up in that way. Um, kind of cheering each other on. So I think that's, yeah, that's a beautiful, um, a beautiful place to come from. I feel like when you're, when you're starting to create those rituals. And, and the, the thing to add on to that is when you do have these foundational kind of principles of clear communication, you get to support each other in authentic ways, you know, like for some of these rituals, rituals. some of these rituals require uh, you know, like, I want you to be present, like, I want you to be there, or maybe I don't need you there, but I, I would love for you to just cheer me on. And maybe if you, you don't understand this thing that I'm interested in, but, you know, just uh, allow me to do my thing. Like, so you, you just allow for that space to, to be okay with not fully getting it, but still being there for each other in a way that works for you both. And I think that's, yeah. that's, that's really, really uh, key. And so why do we have a picture <laughs> of chocolate croissants and uh, do you want some coffee with that whipped cream? <laughs> Babe, that, that's mine. I'm like, I'm the one who likes the tower of whipped cream. Oh my gosh. Okay, so something that we love to do, and I can't remember when we started this, but years ago, um, is a practice called the morning check-in. So it's, well, I guess a ritual. Um, so in, this is just the place that we chose because we loved this bakery in Oakville um, so and we love coffee and chocolate croissants so it worked out and we chose this to be sort of our special spot that anchored this ritual which I also think is is fun to find an environment that either fuels you or you feel safe in or excited in um, or you know we had lots of friends there and it just felt really warm and you know like home um, so there are just questions that you ask each other for uh, morning questions that create just a deeper, uh, clear communication, connection, and growth. Um, so it's a way to create clarity, connection, um, the foundational, it's really foundational in the face of growth and change. Um, just so, like Oliver said, there's that weave, that thread of communication throughout this whole thing, and us having these uh, very intentional um, time together and, and asking these questions really also shows that we value how each other is doing and, and we want to check in. Um, and not to mention also, lastly, it prevents assumptions and confusion and chaos throughout the day. So instead of just knowing or assuming you know what's going on in your 
your partner's mind or what they have planned for the day. Here, you just get it all out on the table in such a graceful way um, that it becomes just like a, a more organic flow. You're like, okay, we got this together. Like we, we're on the same page here. Yeah. yeah, being on the same page, like that's really the key. It's, you know, sometimes we can go, you know, days or even weeks or months with our partner and just not even be on the same page, just kind of going through the motions because you, as you're growing, learning, expanding, changing, facing difficulties and opportunities, your partner's doing the same thing too. And it's almost like you're constantly changing. You have to kind of catch up with each other. Okay, like, who are you now? Who are we now? Like, where are we headed now? Like, what's going on? Um, so these, these morning check-ins, uh, we found that it really reconnects us. It kind of mm -hmm. creates that fluidity uh, and the flow of energy. And so here, here are the four questions. I think just one more thing on yeah. that, uh, even before you get to the questions, it's interesting too, because the times that we're not in the, the really strong commitment of it, like on the daily, it's obvious when we're completely off that because the contrast of it is a lot more chaotic. It's like, oh, I, I didn't know you were going to do that for three hours. Oh, I didn't know uh, you had that appointment. Oh, I wasn't sure about this. I didn't know you were going through that. Like, you know, so there's just more, it just, it, it's just more chaotic is the best word mm -hmm. to describe it. Um, even if it seems small, I just find that power team that we can be with our partner. Uh, it just, it's not, it's not as linked. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And these are, you know, you, when you do a morning check-in, when you do a self-care ritual, these are like you are enacting. You're kind of giving your subconscious, you're giving God, you're giving the universe evidence that I matter. Like, I know that I'm, I'm worth this. I care for myself. I'm loving, I'm loving myself. I'm investing in my relationship. Uh, I'm looking towards the future, you know? So it's, it really says a lot by your actions. And th these are the questions that we really, we really honed it down to, we found them to be so fundamental. So I'll start with the, the, the first question. It's, what are you grateful for? So we love this first thing in the morning because it's like together, first thing in the morning, when we, when we have our coffee, what are you grateful for? Because this really, it, it opens up the conversation with thankfulness. We are so future oriented as a society. We want the next thing, the next goal. And that's okay because we are, we're part of this world and, and we want to excel and have new experiences. But at the same time, uh, when you share together uh, what you're grateful for, and, and it already is here, right? It's the people and the things and the moments that are already in your reality right now. It just reminds you, it's like, wow, nothing is missing. Like everything is perfect. We have everything that we need. And especially when you ask your partner and they say something, sometimes you'll ask, what are you grateful for? And it, the answer might surprise you. Mm -hmm. And you might be like, wow, I didn't even realize that that's on your radar. And it just reminds you too. So I feel like that's, uh, that's a, such a great way to get, get it started. Yeah, that's a good point it, to, for your partner to reflect back at you what you might not be acknowledging as something really good in your life because you either might be used to having it, or it's just not in your awareness in the same way. So again, I love the word like anchored. I feel like when you're both in that conversation of what you've already cultivated together, there's this like different, like not to sound all woo-woo, but there's like a different vibration that starts happening uh, to start your day in that way. It's not always, like you said, like mm -hmm. we have big goals. We're very uh, dream, we're big dreamers. And uh, we're very action oriented on those dreams. So it's nice to be like, oh, wow, like everything, like you said, is already as it should be in this moment. And it's perfect. Um, yeah. Should we do the next question? Sure, I can do it. Um, so the next question is, how can I support you? <laughs> so we were kind of saying, like, do you ever get frustrated for not getting the support you didn't ask for? <laughs> I'm sure this happens to a lot of couples or even in friendships. Um, and it makes it okay. It makes it okay to ask for support, knowing what your partner needs and what they feel is missing. And so just that simple question is just, I, it's so graceful and it's so open and it's so like spacious, right? Rather than us, you know, behind the scenes, like quietly to ourselves, being like, why aren't they giving me this? Uh, why aren't they showing up here? When sometimes our partner is just oblivious to what we really desire and it's not like they're doing it on purpose it's we haven't uh either had the courage to voice it or haven't just gotten around to it um so this really 
just it, it, say, it solves a lot of problems that could happen in your day. Um, and it just has that level of care. Yeah. And that's what we are for each other in, in our, our primary relationships, right, is to be support for each other. And if we don't know what our partner needs support in, like, how can we show up? as well like that's why we started off with like do are, do you ever get frustrated when you don't get the support that you didn't even ask for it's like you didn't even voice it but then you get frustrated i mean like we're on like i know we're all probably guilty in in some way of of that expectations like oh they like i'm expecting them to support me in this way but they're not giving it to me and so now i'm frustrated you know and and that comes out in different ways right afterwards so like that's why we we love that that question the next question is, what are you committed to? So this is like, what are, what's going on today? Like, what are you focused on? What are, what's your goal? What's your priority? Like, what challenges are you or obstacles are you tackling today? And it almost gives us a, just a window of like, what's, what's my partner's attention to? Like, what are they aiming towards today? Because some, like that could also be treated as like, at the end of the day, you can kind of check in and hold your partner accountable and say, well, how did that thing go? Like, how did that, how did that turn out? Did you end up putting time into getting that resolved or cleared up or, or progressing in that area? Um, and also it kind of just promotes of the, the fact that like, well, maybe it's like, I don't have anything that I've committed to. And it's kind of like a reminder of, it's like, yeah, you know, when you live a, an intentional life, uh, it requires you having some commitments. It requires that you have an aim or a purpose for the day. And it doesn't have to be big you know, whatever, if it's big or small, like it doesn't does make a difference. It's just knowing that you are here to be useful to the community, to your family, uh, in, in some form or another to, to be of service. It's, it's just that reminder of like, what are you committed to? Yeah, yeah, I love what you said about, it helps, it helps us also ground what we're working on. Because sometimes me and Oliver especially have lots of different projects yeah. happening simultaneously and I find for myself, sometimes I need to like hone in on one thing, you know, for a certain amount of time. So it's good to be like, oh yeah, okay, today, even though I have four things happening, like what is most important either to get done first, or I feel the most excited about, I have the creative energy for it right now. So like, let's focus on that. So it just, yeah, it's just a lot of clarity. And when there's clarity on two parts in the same household, again, things happen, there's momentum. Um, and like a healthy momentum, not like not being present and we have to do so many things. It's like you do more in less time and energy because you're you've harnessed your power in a different capacity, a different way. Okay, number four. So what do you want to be acknowledged for? I so this is one is like, what do you <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? I feel like most people don't even understand what that question is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can probably agree. Um, so this is all about being seen and heard. It's an act of self-love. Acknowledge for things that you've done or things you're doing and or just your way of being. Um, and this is just a very important one because I think as all human beings, as, as souls, you know, we, we all want to be appreciated and acknowledged for, for all of that, um, especially from the person that we, we love the most or are invested in the most. Um, we hope that they're receiving, you know, what we want to give them and we hope that they're proud of us. And so, so that actually being voiced is anything that's voiced, I feel is sent into motion. Um, you know, holding something inside, there's a power, but when you say it, there's a whole different energy that starts happening. Um, and so, yeah, I think this is one of the most important that we forget <laughs> it's easily i think it's easily forgotten that's why um, it's at the, that's why it's the last question yeah because it's, it's it's like you could be doing things for your partner you could be like saying thank you and saying wow that's awesome or whatever it is but there might be things that are happening behind the scenes where your partner might feel like it, it, are, are they seeing this are they even noticing this mm -hmm. um so you might feel like you're giving all of that acknowledgement but what this, this question, right? Clear communication, it creates specificity, right? You get really specific it, because, you know, you have to think through, like when you get asked that question, it's like, what do I want to be acknowledged for? It's like, what have I done? Who am I being? Um, how, ha how have I shown up 
where I feel like, yeah, I want to be recognized for that. I want to be validated for it. And, you know, part of the, part of the response is, you know, when you hear the answer from your partner is giving that acknowledgement. It's like, you know what, you're right. Like, I totally want to acknowledge you. Like you did show up for me uh, when I didn't, when it was totally unexpected, when it was out of your way. And it's, it just creates this, this level of um, synergy again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think this one also, it's important to, to note that I, I think it's easily overlooked, like acknowledging for things that you're either used to, or because you're so used to it, you'd almost expect it. And I could think of things like, even when it comes to cleaning or, you know, doing laundry or, you know, stuff that as a household, you just start to have roles. Right. And I think, uh, especially knowing, you know, a lot of families myself, it kind of gets like that. It's like, oh, they just do that. And it doesn't become this like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like you folded yeah. my clothes or, you know. It's a team, it's a team effort. Um, right? it's, it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, you just got a new client. It's easy to like acknowledge a, a bigger win per se. But can we actually start noticing the tiny, tinier things? Um, mm -hmm. Again, the tiny acknowledgements make up for a big shift. Yeah. So this next piece is shared vision. Uh, and we, we really believe in having your, your own individual vision and a shared vision. And what this image is, it's actually a painting that I did when I was in Ireland. It took me, I was there for a week with one of my mentors and it was a very deep transformational spiritual experience. And one of the exercises at the end, after all this clarity was to paint your vision. What do you see for yourself in the future? And I, and I swear to you, I don't know the last time I painted, but I just, picked up the paints, picked up the brushes, and this just came out. I swear, probably in like 10 minutes, this painting. And I envisioned this, like, you can see this simplicity, right? Like this simple house, palm trees, beach, mountains, uh, being in nature, being with a lady. You know, I didn't, I didn't have a partner at that time. And I'm just like, this is Costa Rica. Like that was my vision. And what's so cool is during our trip, there were so many moments where we looked around and it's like, wow, this is my painting. Like this is the, this is exactly what I painted all those years ago. We're living it, we're in it, like it's happening. And uh, what's really funny is like when I shared with Janet, when we first got together uh, romantically that I have this vision of being in Costa Rica. Yeah, it was always something that I journaled about when I would meditate, I would see myself here, um, like doing yoga retreats and holding transformational things. and sometimes I would just be with a child, like holding their hand, walking through like a jungle. Um, and I always had this draw to Costa Rica. Like it, I'd never been there. I barely even knew anyone that talked about it that often, but I just felt this resonance of like, I've been there. I am meant to go back there. Uh, there's something there for me. Um, and so it was just a thread for years. And I just knew at some point uh, that would come to fruition when it was time. And it was just so funny, not funny. <laughs> of course the synchronicity of just when we were starting to fall in love and realized wow like we're both co totally like on the same wavelength when it comes to this big part of a vision um because it wasn't just trip oriented we actually saw uh like a lifestyle that this embodied as well so it was really uh it was really cool i even have like notepads of us like journaling about about this like on a little like notepad in Niagara Falls like years ago yeah so. we're dreaming together right like yeah and we'll get to that part um so that's actually a picture of us when we did that surf lesson that we were just talking <laughs> there about we are. look like pros but not really yeah. no, <laughs> okay. no no not even so really this is you know we want to it's we want to explore the new possibilities in life and family and relationship that's why we we look at what the what our visions are you know what our goals our aims our dreams are you know, knowing what each other are thinking about and imagining. And, you know, I leave, we left this question at the bottom because it's such a, I feel like it's a good one to think about. It's like, when was the last time you dreamed together? It, it happens so much in the beginning of relationships at the start of a new chapter when you're like, oh, we should buy a new house or we should, you know, go travel. Like there's, there's moments, right? But what else do you dream of? Like lifestyle or how do you spend your time? How do you contribute? How, you know, in what ways do you want to be generous? Uh, like there's it's just so fun to just remind yourself like man when we were kids all we did was dream all we did was play with what was possible and that's what you know that's what's so fundamental about this piece for us yeah and I, for me it would be a big a big cue to 
I mean, to see where you're also not in alignment with that future vision. Because, you know, when you're with someone, I, I assume for the most part, you're hoping that you're going to continue being together. And I think seeing a similar picture uh, is really significant. And, and even from things like we've done a lot of personal growth just separately, um, lots of vision boards and things like that, cutting out pictures to make collages, anything that really gets us excited about what we hands down can create if we're actually willing to put in the work. Um, and so I think it's just, yeah, again, it's like you're riding on that same lane. The same wavelength. Yes, wavelength, <laughs> that's a better word. <laughs> so we wanna share the. <laughs> yeah, so the remarkable day. So this is a really powerful, truthful exercise. I feel like it's a truth telling exercise um, is to describe a remarkable day in your life two years from now. And we've both done this, I think, a couple of times. Um, like remarkable, like yeah. one that's worth talking about, like two years from now. What does that look like? Yeah. Um, so like we, you write it basically from the moment you open your eyes in the morning. What do you see? How do you feel? How does your morning look? What is your work day like? What is your family? You know, from every single detail. Um, it's just, yeah, the more you can describe it into like a feeling, like you'd read it and, you know, you could just be there and you could just like viscerally experience that day is how you want to write it. And it's just, I, I, it's amazing the clarity that comes from that. It's like Oliver said before, it's like, it kind of can be surprising. I can't remember what you were talking about that part, but it's almost like it could be surprising in what you want or also what you might not have in that vision. Yeah, you might be like, in something specific right now that takes up a lot of your time. Maybe it's like career-wise or certain things like a job or something that you're so focused on right now. But when you think of what does a remarkable day look like two years from now, it might actually surprise you that that doesn't even come up. Mm -hmm. Like that's not even a thing in your future. So it's really interesting. Like what isn't even in my future when I look there? What I like about this exercise, it's not like you're trying. It's not like you're trying to kind of control what two years, what it looks like two years from now, but you're just kind of like, put yourself there and what do you see, right? Not like, this is how I want it to be, just like, mm -hmm. what do you see, right? If it's a remarkable day, what makes it so remarkable? And uh, yeah, there's some things that you might be like, shock yourself with. Yeah, like one of mine, I, I read mine back recently from two years ago and it was all about like, I wasn't, I wasn't employed by anyone. Like I was 100% self-employed so we could travel and work in different places um, and have the lifestyle that we're working towards. And it was just amazing. I'm like, interesting. I didn't put anything about like working at an art school anymore or being having any ties to anyone else's businesses, but my own creations. Um, so that was a truth telling moment, um, but also amazing that I, I had that intention from a deep soul level because I just wrote it out from that uh, free flowing place and you know not curating it and I was like wow and then you know today that's what I've created so it's it's just one of those things it's a moving into form practice yeah. um yes yeah. and, and so this final piece is really just when you when you write that down share share it with your partner share it with your lover it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see where do your visions overlap where do they differ what are some things that you didn't know about each other in terms of what you see for the future um, again, it, it creates new conversations, right? And, and this creates an ongoing conversation. And what that does is it almost like opens you up to spotting and noticing different opportunities, different people, uh, different moments that you might not have noticed before, just because this remarkable day helps orient your attention and your awareness. And, and you'll be so surprised with what begins to reveal itself just in your day-to-day -day life that it can bring you closer to it just by setting this uh, doing this exercise. And so this next um, pillar that we want to share with you is the importance of having common core values. You know, we have these values that we, that we have, uh, that we aspire to, but there are some core values really that like, that are like four or five main themes that need to be present, that we need to be like experiencing and expressing in our lives for us to feel like fully authentic, fully ourselves. And I think it's, it's, it's one of those things where you can see it in your life. Um, we'll share with you like some ways that you can kind of 
tease it out, but just want to share like some simple examples of, you know, we, you saw the yoga picture of me and Jan, we love, and one of our values is our physical well-being and, and yoga and being in nature, wildlife, you know, traveling and seeing art. So that's a picture of us uh, at a gallery, like, you know, just being in awe of, of the beauty that people have left behind mm -hmm. in, the, in their artistic endeavors. In Italy, when you could, <laughs> when you could go there. I'm glad we went when we did. Yeah. Oh, man. And so really, it's just, these are essential things, right? Like it's foundational. Janet says, code of honor. These are your ideals. It's uh, it, understanding what your values are. It really helps create a sense of direction and alignment and uh, a state of integrity. Because one of the things that I notice is like, when you, when I have crossed my own boundary or let someone cross my boundary, or, or if I've betrayed myself in some way, it really stings. I could feel that regret i could feel that that pain and what that reveals to me is oh there's a value there like there's something that is it, it's really important there's a standard there for me uh, and, and it's so important for me to be aware of what that thing is so it's clarity on what's important to each of us as individuals and as a couple is there anything else you want to expand on yeah i think well it's definitely important to know what each other's are so we can also be that blind spot for each other sometimes uh, you know, I consider us quite aware of people, but there are times, sure, where we're either tempted to make a decision that isn't, doesn't, you know, stand by those values or isn't 100% in alignment. And we could just sort of like, you know, poke each other a little bit, be like, are you sure? Because, you know, this is, this is who you really are. And you might, you might feel like you, that self-betrayal, you know, in a couple of weeks, uh, if you take that. So there's kind of like moments where I think we can just, have, be that bit of support and sort of um, compass for each other too, because we all have blind spots sometimes. Um, and so it's, yeah, there's also a supportive role in having that knowledge of each other's core values and then using that knowledge to, to really keep each other grounded in them. And so these are the, the, this is the suggestion that we have is, you know, when you look at the remarkable day exercise, you know, one thing that you can do is just like look it over and you're going to notice that there are some big themes that show up. There's going to be things that, that really stand out to you. Um, and, and when you look at it, you you can just tell yourself, you're like, okay, well, wow, there's exploration here. There's learning here. There's contribution here. There's teaching, there's family, there's freedom, there's, you know, nature. You can just look at the things that you wrote down in your remarkable day and you can easily start finding out, um, what some of your core values are. And what's really cool is when you share it with your partner, you could find out the ones that are overlapping, the ones that are, that are uh, for you as a, as a couple together. And, you know, like I said, it's, this is an ongoing conversation. It's, it's the, the more you put your awareness on, okay, like, what are our values? Like, and you, and you kind of talk about at the, at the dinner table, it really starts getting you kind of going and like, oh, that thing, we need to, we can let go of that. Like mm -hmm. this thing that we're doing, like that's not as important anymore. Uh, one thing that I love kind of thinking about is this idea of like, you just because you created a goal doesn't mean it's still a goal. You can mm -hmm. always let go of the goal. Just because you, you were committed to this vision before doesn't mean it's still your vision. Like maybe it's not authentic anymore, but you can let that go. You can free yourself of it. Yeah, that's a good point that we're not like so attached to what we once wanted or we're so connected to as in like, this is going to be the way it's going to look, you know? Um, I've had that many times where, you know, either made a vision for it or, or had it in written form where there are parts that I'm like, oh yes, that's still a fit. I'll take that with me when I, you know, write a new one. And then parts from like that totally, like that has ship has sailed or that, <laughs> that doesn't even feel like me anymore or whatever. Um, and the same goes with, the core values themselves, I think once we think we have that honor system, that it always stays the same. And I don't think it does. Like there are times, for example, in my life where friendship was right at the top, you know, especially when you're a bit younger and friends are like the, the thing that matter the most to a lot of, <laughs> to a lot of people. You spend most of your time with them, like you bond the most, talk to them. Um, and then over time, like other ones start to, to shift. That was one for me. Um, things like adventure became higher up on my list the past couple of years uh, when it comes to what I value. It's like, I want to go on adventures. I want to travel. I want to do this. Um, and so I think revisiting them and not being attached 
to what they were before is also, uh, there's nothing like, there's no negativity attached to that. It's just like, oh, I'm changing because I'm always evolving. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with, with just changing what my values are either. Yeah. All right. Next pillar, holding space. <laughs> so this is something that it's a term I, I feel like is used a lot these days, especially in the yoga personal growth space. Um, but I feel like it means something different to everyone. And so I feel like it's something really important to, I guess, discern, distinguish the ways that we can hold space in a relationship. Um, so this is a quote that we really loved um, by Brene Brown. She's a researcher, speaker, author, a wonderful, powerful woman. Um, and this quote really, I feel like, is rooted in what we're about to talk about. So she says, show me a woman who can sit with her man in real, real vulnerability, in deep fear, and be with him in it. I will show you a woman who, A, has done her work, and B, does not derive her power from that man. And if you show me a man who can sit with a woman in deep struggle and vulnerability and not try to fix it, but just hear her and be with her and hold space for it, I'll show you a guy who's done his work and a man who doesn't derive his power from controlling and fixing everything. Yeah. So you can start. With yeah, so... Um holding space it's 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 important because we all are go, growing and we're changing and there's things that happen that are out of our control so there's going to be breakdowns and breakthroughs and we got to find a way to be with each other in the face of those things without fixing changing solving or controlling you know i really i learned this lesson a long time ago that when somebody is in a deep painful and vulnerable state it's not my, like my immediate instinct is to save them. My immediate instinct is to say, oh, it's, it's going to be okay. Like dry your eyes, like cheer up. Let's, like, what can I do to make you feel better? And, and actually what that does is it, it makes it about me. Like it really has me be the one to control the situation. And what it does is it invalidates what the other person is experiencing, their genuine emotional experience. And so, you know, what I really had to start to learn for, my, for myself as an individual is to allow that to occur. You know, as much as I want to make it better, that's not my job. Something is unfolding right, you know, right in front of this person's uh, eyes and in their life. And they're just, they need to go through it. Um, so it's not my job to fix, change, or solve it. I don't want to make it about myself anymore. So really what holding space is in, in a way, it's to allow your partner to be exactly as they are. You know, it's not about you and you gotta kind of trust that your partner has their own unique process. Like they are adults and they can, you know, they can process this. And if they do choose to say, honey, I need your support. Uh, can you support me here? I would love your, your guidance or something. That's an, that's an opening, right? Those morning check-ins is an opening for something like that. But besides that, it's like kind of al allow it to happen because I think what that does, it kind of just promotes the, the, the ability to be like, you know what, I'm okay. it's okay to feel like this. There's nothing wrong with having these, the, these unpleasant emotions. And uh, I would love Janet to just share what this picture is, what this means. Yeah, I chose this specifically, not just because they're pretty flowers, um, but because when Oliver and I first started dating and we're starting a romantic dynamic. Um, I was still very much in many stages of grief after two of my girlfriends had passed away. And so there's a lot happening inside of me. Although, you know, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, you can't, you shouldn't start a relationship or you can't fall in love if you're, you're going through all this. Sometimes there's that like, you know, I don't, I don't even know what that is, but I've heard that before. And I remember thinking that like, should I not offer myself what I, what I have to offer right now to someone when I'm, when I'm in the midst of the waves of grief, you know, the anger, the depression, the anxiety, the bargaining, all those stages, sometimes all in one day, sometimes on different timelines. Um, and what was interesting about that was, and I think Oliver was just such a strong pillar for me there, was that, like he said, he let me be in that process without taking it personal 
right? There were some times where I would, like this moment, I was just trying to push him away and probably my anger around the pain I was feeling had nothing to do with him, but I'm sure there were moments I might not have been super pleasant or uh, seeming like myself than I was the day before, uh, you know? So there were a lot of um, different sort of hurdles and, and challenges that came with that, but I feel like he just let me be in my pain and let me be in my grief in all the ways that it was being expressed and then showed up in like gentle ways that I think, you know, his intuition at times would guide him. Um, like this day, you know, my words were saying one thing, but I think he picked up energetically, I needed another thing. Uh, so, you know, in this case, I was trying to push him away and I was just like, I can't do this. Um, and then he just shows up at my door with flowers and, and ingredients to make French toast for me. And, you know, it felt so not like to trying to fix, but just trying to be there without, it, it, I don't even know how to put it into words, but it felt like a graceful gesture that felt like, um, that something I felt like I could take in. So I think it's also about, sometimes we say things and mean another, um, so yeah, really being tuned into our, our intuitive self, our soul self, uh, also with our partner to really know what they need from us is also important. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's really about that process and allowing each other to heal at your own pace and um, knowing that you're both in the work in a lot of different things, right? Whether it's family trauma, whether it's this, that, the other, we're, we're always separately healing, evolving, growing. Um, and so to be a pillar for that while we're also creating a bond, it's, uh, it's a lot to, to work with, which obviously can be done, but I think there's, um, it takes a deep presence to know how to navigate that. And I, I chose that memory because it just stands out to me as a moment of, wow, he must've been really, really tuned in to get, <laughs> to get where I was at you know so ask your partner what does holding space mean to you like what does that look like for you because i think it's different for each one of us and it's so important to you know bring some intentionality into your conversation and find out what does that look like it's like okay like we're in a good place right now when when things hit the fan um how what is what does it look like for me to to hold space for you do you want me to distract? Like, let me know. Do you need? Do you need me to distract you? Do you want me to comfort you? Do you want me to just sit there and listen? Um, I think it's it's so cool to just decide that you can plan that ahead of time because life is inevitably going to be life. It's going to happen, and so each circumstance will be different. So don't be afraid to check back in. I know there's times where, you know, we're going through stuff and we'll just check in. It's like, what could I do? What could I do to support you? How can I support you? Just like those questions in our check-in. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be in the morning. It <laughs> doesn't have to be in the morning, but it's like, <laughs> some, but sometimes the answer is just like nothing. And it's yeah. just like, okay, like, I'll just be here, you know, like, I'll just be here. And that's, and that's totally okay. So I think this is a muscle um, that as, as society, we need to, we need to start flexing this muscle because I think mm -hmm. we can really, uh, create so much more opportunity for unity and harmony in the in our community and in the world if we learn how to hold space for each other rather than trying to control and fix and solve it or, or trying to make it wrong for for being unpleasant mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah it, there's like you said different ways and I think over the past couple of years even in friendships I've realized that dynamic changing especially in the more yoga personal growth spiritual space it became very like fix oriented. Like we have all the tools, we have all these principles, like you can just be better and smiley again. You know, there's there's actually some harmful sides to all that. You could call it toxic positivity or whatever <laughs> you want. But I, I've noticed an evolution happening when it comes to even relationships within that. Um, and even some of the female friendships I have, it's like, now we can just sit there and have someone just like totally vulnerably open their heart and have what may seem like a breakdown and we could just all just listen and there's just like I, I had this group here one day and it was like this silent support and it was just like palpable the energy in the room was just who because no one we knew there's nothing we could say that would change this particular friend's pain 
And it was just like, we didn't have to say anything. It was like us in that circle, um, just being there was enough. And that's a really powerful, mm. a powerful thing. Let's start kick this okay. off. Okay. So our next pillar is love languages. I love this picture because we just look like glorious and happy. I'm like, this is Costa Rica. This is Pura Vida right here. Um, so yeah, our love languages. Um, I can't remember when we got to know this. I think Oliver introduced me to this. Um, the concept of really knowing how we receive love the most, like how we crave love, how it fills up our cup to be loved in a certain way. Um, and there's, yeah, you can, we'll go deeper into this. Um, so yeah, how we each experience love differently, um, being clear on each other's top love language it creates intentionality on how we show and express our love. And also the way on the opposite end, we can hurt per the person the most if we're not actually giving them uh, love in that expression per se. Um, we chose this picture just because <laughs> my love language you'll get to know is, uh, is quality time. And this is my cute nephew on a, <laughs> on a snow day where school was canceled. We went to bargaining. And so time where it's just present and fun and spontaneous and all of that's my, my love. And so like that last piece uh, of knowing your love language, it also tells mm -hmm. you what is the, like, what is the thing that will hurt you the, the most? Uh, like for if you use it in reverse, you know, or, or you don't get it like that, you, you will feel the sorrow, you'll feel uh, the gap like that is missing, because you are not getting it or, you know, so it's, it's so important to know these things, because we are all speaking different languages when it comes to love. And we might give, we might think that we're giving love in the way that we can speak in that language, but our partner might be like not even receiving it, because they don't understand that language. Um, so this awareness it just really helps facilitate that connection and so we'll go through what the five love languages are and the first one is uh, words of affirmation so for for me actually that is my top love language it means oliver needs acknowledgement encouragement <laughs> praise Yay. like you need to <laughs> i need the love notes i need the verbal i need to like to, to hear her talking about me in good ways <laughs> behind my back like all that Carol stuff alert. but again like the reverse thing right like if 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 i hear something that's like on the opposite and it's not a word of affirm word of affirmation if it's like a a negative or a downward thing that'll hurt me more than some than something else right like um, I'll, I'll be more sensitive to it because it is my love language but when I get it, it like it will fill me up. I'll feel nourished. I'll feel nurtured. Um, and the next one, quality time. <laughs> so quality over quantity. Like I mentioned, with that deep presence and attention, uh, this is my most prominent love language, and it has been my whole life. And I, what's interesting is looking back on childhood, I could actually see why I struggled so much because my parents were always like working and distant and all of that and I just I realized that's why I felt something was missing because I wanted time I didn't care about them providing or that stuff you know even though it's important uh, so I think from a, a young age I'm bringing this up because I think we could see as far back as we can remember how we received that love or if we felt something was missing like what well what was missing um intentionally or not right and so yeah time together like Oliver knows that that's a part of why we're creating an entrepreneurial lifestyle uh, to make our own hours, to try to work less when we do have children to be with them more. Um, so it's just designing it in that way. So, so we also have that. The third one is physical touch. Actually, wait, I, I, want, I do want to point out, like, I think it's so cool that when you know your love language, you can kind of connect the dots backwards in your life and be like, oh that's why that's stunned or why that's why that relationship didn't work or that's why there were so many blocks in that relationship because i wasn't getting that love language so it is it is cool to kind of un understand and see that so uh this next one is physical touch so embracing kissing hugging intimacy so if this is your top love language and like for, it's been days weeks months that you haven't like hugged or embraced or like or kissed the cheek or or whatever it is 
like there's gonna be like that, that feeling of like I don't feel loved, I don't feel seen, I don't feel like appreciated. So it's so important to to kind of understand that like you have to understand your partner's love language. If it's physical touch, make sure like give that extra effort, right? Like hold them for for a, you know for a couple of seconds in the morning. It's very simple things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the next one is acts of service. So it could be as simple as doing errands for your partner, chores, just being generous in certain ways. Um, so this can show up, of course, different for everyone, um, but really having those, I feel like acts of service, people who really connect to this one, they wanna see like multiple little things throughout the day that just are a constant like You're taking care building of blocks yeah. of, yeah, of just like, oh, you just did that one thing for me? Okay. like. You appreciate me. You love me. Um, yeah, I don't know. But you want to the, the last one is gift giving. Um, so this is not really like extravagant gift giving. It's just the the fact that like, oh my my partner was thinking about me and like they brought something back. Like, oh you thought to bring me some soup back or you know it could be like so so simple. But really it's just a matter of um, just these material items that represent the fact that even when you're not with me physically, you are thinking about me. And that's kind of, that represents that, that you love me. Uh, so I think it's, it's just one of those things where, see, like even me just reading the last two acts of service and gift giving, yeah, I'm just like, I don't even get it. Like, <laughs> because it's not our love language. I'm just like, I don't really know how to really describe that. Cause that's not our yeah, love language. Yeah, that's probably why we didn't do it as well. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we, yeah, we can't ext extrapolate as well, but that's kind of, see, that's how it works. When you know your love language, you get it. You know how how it feels, how to receive it, you know? Yeah, and just like you mentioned, you could, that's why I've seen a lot of, you know, people that are close to me, why they're struggling, because it's just that, their partner is giving them like words of affirmation when they want like physical touch, you know? Mm. And so it, those are completely different things. Um, and, and it's like, that's where I feel like that, uh, that kind of bitterness starts to get stirring because you're wanting something else. And, and then again, the other person doesn't know. Well, I keep giving her gifts. I thought she likes all the jewelry I give her. Like she seems happy when she opens it, <laughs> but really like she wants to spend time. Like she really wants more time with you. Yeah. So I think it's just, yeah, it's just being in that clarity again, back to communication because communication of just understanding this could change a ton in a relationship very like easily with that effort, of course. Mm -hmm. So the exercise here is really to just identify what your top love languages are. You know, um, you know, if you read the book, Five Love Languages, I think it's by Garth Chapman. Uh, there's a free assessment tool on his website. So if you can want to do a test and answer all these questions, it takes like less than five minutes just to find out what your love language is. <clears throat> it's really like knowing that when I give my partner uh, love in the form that they understand that they receive, what I'm doing is I'm kind of like filling up their metaphorical love tank and, you know, you, they, they will feel more nourished and you, you'll start to understand, like, this is why we, we were just missing each other. When I keep doing these acts of service and I think that I'm showing you my love, you don't even acknowledge it. It doesn't even mean anything to you because you, what you want is quality time, let's say. So, you know, just notice how this whole presentation is like self-awareness, it's about communication, communicating each other's needs and also asking for it, right? Like when you ask that last question in the morning checklist of like, how, like what do you wanna be acknowledged for? Like for me, like that's a word of affirmation thing. So you try to find ways to infuse some of these things you discovered, like your values, your vision and all that stuff. And I think also within just our language of speaking with each other, um, I love, the way things are framed can shift the whole conversation. Like, like, I love how Oliver always says like, can I share something with you? Like, it's not just like, hey, like this isn't this, like almost like things are coming at you and not, not in a negative way, but there's some kind of, again, there's like an open door where you're saying like, you're accepting, like, yeah, of course. Or like, can I request something of you? Like, you know, just it's, it's really in the power of our language, I think too, that creates harmonious, <laughs> our harmonious relationship and just life um in, in itself so i'm so I, I feel like that's such a great way to end it because when it comes to just the like learning this new language of this new way of communicating it's not even just new it's just kind of just like a little bit more nuanced 
um, it kind of creates just a new openness, like a new space to be yourself, to be with each other. Um, and I think it's like, like for, for us at least, it's been crucial. You know, every time we, we practice these things, we find the, the connection to be so much more, so much more meaningful, you know, even, especially during the more difficult times. Yeah, those are the, the hardest times to keep up with, you know, things that we're committed to for most people and have been for us, right? And so it's just that constant recommitment, constant begin again without, you know, holding on to how it didn't go perfectly. And um, yeah, just really being a stand for each other. It really is that, is recommitting when you fall off the things that you know are really beneficial um, and create that deeper bond. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think yeah. that is all. I think that's it. We can still talk. <laughs> Thank you everyone Thank you for so listening much. to us. There's so much to share, but hopefully we picked some good uh, pillars there. You, that was absolutely amazing. I, I kept feeling guilty. I felt like I, I should have paid for this. Oh my was, gosh. That, that was silly. so, no, that was honestly so good. You guys should take this on the road. <laughs> and let's go to Costa Rica and just tour and do this talk. It's I hope so. <laughs> it's brilliant, really. That was so good. So interesting. Wow. And so insightful. Thank you, guys.